Business is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the publishing day to all of you, and um, I, I'm gonna. It's, I'm solo today, and I'm gonna be kissing on what has now become absolutely essential. I think in all authors, um, and actually with anyone with a website. So first of all, what I want to kick it off with is it is so important to one have a website. I can't tell you how many times. I get asked, should I have a website? And the answer is, does it snow in the Arctic? Or maybe does it freeze in the Arctic? At least right now it does. And and the answer is absolutely yes. You must have um, a website. It is your internet calling card. It is your um, everything where people can find you globally. And that means also that it's a vehicle. And I'll tell you why a website is more important than Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, fill in the blank. And this is why. On your website, you can collect and keep control of emails that come your way. Now, a lot of people kind of poo-poo that. They can't think, you know, why is that important in the process? And it is essential in the process. And that you've got to understand that, you know, Twitter can change its rules all of a sudden on how you access and communicate with people. Facebook does it almost weekly. Google Plus, which, you know, people were building up like crazy. I had thousands and thousands and thousands of contacts on Google Plus. Adios. It's gone. Uh, That LinkedIn, when Microsoft took it over, had a huge transition. One of the most powerful things that I could do and interact with people on a group that I had called Author U was 17,000, 17,000 members that I could once a week email to all of them directly. LinkedIn took care of that. Gone is that capability. So what can you control? It is your own email that you, that comes in via your website. So what I want to talk about is really one, need a website. Two, what's the purpose of your website? Multiple. One, it's to supply information, content to people who visit. How do they find you? Well, maybe through social media, maybe through push-outs, maybe through a blog that's been reshared or revisited, maybe with your savvy use of keywords. All of those things come into play. But they come to your website. So what are you going to do? You want to supply content. So that's one of the purposes, con- content. Secondly, it's to develop trust. So when people go there, they trust you. They trust that the content is not faux, that it's not fake. It's solid based on your your sage advice, your wisdom, your years in the trenches, the research you've done, the books you've written, fill in the blank. So it, it develops trust. It also is a portal. And this is the cool thing. It's a portal to collect the emails. Now, here's what most author do, authors do. And I hope that by the time we're done with today's podcast, that you will have let go that concept. That they think that in the old days, and I'm talking just a few years ago, it used to be uh, there was a little, little window that said subscribe to my blog. Well, people rarely do they subscribe to blogs anymore directly because uh, they know that 
that you uh, were, are going to let them know in their social media feeds that um, you have a new blog. All right. So should you collect emails for blogs? Sure, sure, sure. But there's also other ways to do it. Now, you can say subscribe to my blog. But a lot of people are resisting. You could say subscribe to my newsletter and I'll give you an alternative to a newsletter too because I think, you know, people thinking, oh, that's a lot of work. Um, and that, how else can we get people to um, share their email with you? All right, so the, the, the objective of what I want to go through today is to really open the window, actually, open the door and take it off of creating a lead magnet or an opt in. And that is something that will be free. Now it also used to be people say, well, you know, if you leave your email, um, I'll give you a free chapter of my book. Nah, that's it. Nah, don't do that because they can go to Amazon. Most likely if you, if you're in search inside, they can already go there and see all over the place. Um, so don't, <laughs> that's not the option. Should you give them a free chapter? Sure. Put it on your book page, you know, where it has the cover and it has a nice description, maybe some kudos from a few people, you know, get a free chapter and then it links over to how to buy it. That's what I would recommend you do. What we're also really talking about here is to create what I call an opt-in, a lot of people call it a lead magnet, means both the same thing. But what it is, is a lure. You know, you're throwing, it's like going fishing, and you throw out that line. If you went fishing, I used to live in Montana, and we fished a lot. All right, so you throw out the line, and you start to reel it in. Okay, you reel it in. So what are we going to reel it in? Well, you got to have the, the lure that will lead to the hook. And when they're hooked, they say, oh, you betcha, I'm going to put my name and my email. Now, I've seen some opt-ins with just taking the email. I'd rather have the name, you know, first or first and last name would be ideal um, and the email address. So what do you do with that? Um, because we're talking about really using email marketing. You, you want to build up this list. And so the challenge I have for all of you who are listening in, whatever day, whatever hour it is, is go to whatever your email manager is. Some people use AWeber. Some people use MailChimp. Some people use Constant Content. Um, some people have, uh, you know, private groups that they work with. It doesn't matter to me right now. What matters is you've got something to collect emails, All right? So with that, I want you to go to whatever that source is and see how many email subscribers you have to whatever, if you were just collecting them, you didn't bother to send anything out, which is, you know, that's, a, that's not a good thing. But how many email possibility <laughs> subscribers do you have? All right, so that's your baseline. So we have this new benchmark. Uh, uh, that we're going, we can fall to, but what we now want to do is build. So what are you going to do? I had, um, before I, I just replaced mine and I would encourage all of you, uh, who are listening in, if you have the capability of also being online at the same time, um, that you can see a screen to go to my personal website, which is the book shepherd.com thebookshepherd.com. And you will see at the top, you know, it has my logo, the book shepherd. You see a picture of me looking over, peering over one of my books, author you, and you'll see a tagline, which we'll come back and kiss on before we leave this podcast as well. But you'll see right below it, it says it, it, there's, there's a block, a little sign that says SOS. All right, the sign on it then says, Grab, grab your free SOS website due diligence essential plan to protect you. Basically, I created a website estate plan. Now, how that came together, and I, and I wrote a blog, oh, a year or two ago, 
about what happens if your your uh, webmaster gets hit by the bus. Well, a lot of us, including me at that time, would be in deep doo doo, because literally, you know, I don't know all the apps, all the sign-ins they had. I don't know what I paid for and what's free. I don't know who the contact person is. I don't know who the backup person is. There was a lot of stuff I didn't know. So I put together a very detailed list as if what happens if your webmaster goes tiptoeing through the tulips and doesn't take you with them? What happens if they decide to just drop out and quit? What happens if there is an accident and they get hit by the bus? What happens if you decide you want to divorce them and leave? What happens? All right, so what I did was created a list of 13 essential questions you have to have answered by whoever is managing your website starting, and, and you want them as in the next 24 to 48 hours, because it's for your protection. Your website is one of your most valuable assets that you can have. So I created the SOS website. And it says, literally, there's a line that says, most authors don't have protection for their website. Are you one of them? Do you know where all the details of your website are backed up? Do you know what to do if your webmaster is injured, ill, or disappears? Do you have all your logins, passwords, codes, and anything else that you need to access the administration side of your website immediately? I bet most of you don't. So I created this. So I'm going to tell you, for heaven's sakes, Click on the little button that says click to subscribe. Give me your name and email and instantly you will have the full enchilada. It will save your life. We'll be right back. It's Author You, your guide to book publishing, and I'm Judith Bryles. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author You Extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, Members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author Use, the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author You, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at authoru.org. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Oh, 
Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask if you want to write and publish a book if you want to be successful as an author your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith briles all right so Hopefully, I've convinced you with what I just did uh, to, number one, get my SOS uh, sheet So for, for website due diligence, because it is so essential. Can you imagine, really, what happens if you can't reach someone all of a sudden and they have all the inside scoop that makes your web's website flick, click, and tick? You're going to be in deep doo-doo. So the purpose is to create something. Now, you always want to know, is there any proof to this, all this going on? All right. When we put it up, one week later, we had 1,500,1500 more email subscribers. Oh, we always get a few every day, you know, but, but this was a huge leap and jump. So I created something. Now, the other thing is you, you do need to measure it. That's why I'm saying for all of you. Um, and then I'm going to go through the step-by-steps and the how-to of how to put it together. But that you do want to know where you are right now. How many do you have? Do you have 73? Do you have 400 subscribers? Do you have you know several thousand? What's your number? Because that's where we start. All right. Then once you create this new gem, um, then what you do is that you start now measuring and I would give it a week. I would just start going in like on every Monday or every Friday or fill in the blank, just see what your count is. And, you know, I do also want to say that a lot of people get panicked when they see people who unsubscribe or they see the count, you know, their count went down. You know what? It's okay because maybe they're just the wrong fit anymore. Don't clutter up your stuff. Um, and you don't want to have people hit you, you know, say you're spamming them because you keep sending it just at, and even though, you know, we, we're supposed to, I think, um, we all have unsubscribes when our emails go out, um, our, whether it's a blog, a newsletter, fill in the blank that there's, I still get people saying, would you please unsubscribe me? And I, you know, I want to say, um, all you had to do is click this thing and it's done. But I'm always glad to do that. And I always say thank you for being, you know, in the past. And um, I hope you come back again and just let it go. So before I had another uh, piece that was very successful. And I just decided the reason why I put it with the SOS website due diligence essentials is that I felt it was getting a little bit long in the tooth. And actually, now, here's what I'm going to do with it, because I am a huge, huge believer in repurposing. And in repurposing is I'm going to take what I gave before, which was my free, and remember, free, you've got to have free in this process. But the free uh, guide uh, that delivers the essential publishing essential must-haves, and I had identified um, eight publishing essentials, the publishing essentials alphabet soup, and that it had, you know, how to get your ISBN, how to get the LCCN, how to write an acknowledgments page, how to get your right categories on Amazon, um, eight of them. 
And I put it together. Originally, I put it together as a booklet. And it was like 34 pages. And I had it all laid out professionally and all those things. So, it, you know, it looked slick and click. And then someone said, well, why are you doing that every day? You might want to think about doing a drip. And I said, a what? A drip campaign. And so we broke them up and you got one each day. So they got this extra email from me each day until they had all eight essentials. Well, I, it, and, and the first time I put that up, it, we jumped 1,700 emails in one week. All right. Now, what I'm going to do in, in the repurpose, I started noodling that because I have all these author you, while you, mini guides, one on crowdfunding, one on uh, book publishing, blunders and bloopers and boo-boos uh, to avoid, one on uh, the author you itself and one on how to create a million dollar speech. I thought, wait a sec, what about doing an author you mini guide for publishing essentials? I mean, I have it all here. And I'll do 10 publishing essentials and put it all together. And voila, I'll just have another little book and an ebook and just push that out. So you don't you don't want to get rid of these things when you create them because it does make sense to, you know, let them run their cycle and then come back and replace them um, and then move them to your resource tab. If you have one on your website or somewhere where you keep information that you share with people um, or how about a small book. People like small books. And I'm talking about five by seven size. All right. So let's talk about creating the steps to an email opt-in page that will attract your buyers and visitors. So just to reiterate what I said in the last segment, emailing marketing is still the best online method for converting prospects, those voyeurs sometimes, into true customers, clients, raving fans or super fans, what we call them, um, when you are using the internet. And if you're saying, I'm not going to sell my books, I'm not going to go on the internet, you need to reevaluate that situation. So let's talk about the first, the critical processes um, and get them there. And there's going to be several steps I'm going to walk you through. But the first thing you're going to need to do is come up with what in the heck you're going to do. Um, and I would tie it into what your expertise is. So if you're a fiction writer, you know, maybe you have a killer thing, uh, a, a cheat sheet. People love sh cheat sheets, by the way. That's one of the top areas to pull down and take advantage of. So what is it that you're going to create? If you're a nonfiction author, that, you know, your deal is problems are your best friends. So your ideal reader why are they reading you and what's their problem that they're coming to your words, your wisdom to resolve? And I would suggest you build some kind of a nifty gift um, around that then and you give that away, but only if they subscribe with their email. So this first step is crucial. You need a clear, de detailed understanding of who you want to subscribe. It's not everybody. The people who you want to stay on your website, to get your blogs or people who are interested in maybe hiring you, getting more of your books, following your advice, uh, attending your webinars. If you've got an online course, certainly subscribing to it. What do you have there? If you don't really understand who it is if you want, you're not going to generate the interest or gain any of their trust in the process. So I would start with there on that. All right, next. So what is it you want to give them? Your email opt-in page really has only one goal, to snag them, to get them to sign up um, and add to your email list. And, and you have that. Now, let me give you an aside. Let's say that you're out and about and speaking and doing things. I would suggest you carry a... Um, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a tag board. Um, we have acrylic type little boards, clipboards that we have that people can put their name and their email on. And we tell them at the very tippy top. I mean, if there's a certain goal of what I'm giving, if I'm going to send them something, we we'll, I verbally will say it, but it always says at the top is they're signing that they will be added to our, uh, uh, preferred email list 
and they will, you know, we will be communicating with this way. All right, that satisfies the first opt-in. So you want to kind of put that out so you have it. Now, every word and element of the page, this is this is where we're that page that I read to you what my uh, the website, SOS website uh, plan was. Every word counts on this. And it should support it should support the single action that is driving them down to the hook. This is the lure. Now you're hooking them, and it drives them down to the hook. And that hook, of course, is gotcha. Um, and they give their name and their email. If every element, every line that you put in in your copy, and you're not talking about a whole page, we're we're talking about you know it could be ten lines. But it's going to have bullets in there or little check marks. Or I have three check marks in my current one. And again, I'm going to encourage you, go to thebookshepherd.com. Number one, sign up so you get the SOS package and we can be connected. But number two, take a picture of it or print it out so you have it. I mean, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Copy me. Make it easy for yourself. If your words, your lines, don't drive them down. Um, uh, don't have the grab, get rid of them, delete them. Now, in the copy, uh, don't use any any links for them to go off someplace else. You want to keep them right there, keep them very, very focused. So uh, be careful with what you think are bills and whistles and, and the like. You just want to keep your essentials with the right words to hook your visitor. Your visitor in, in so one page, one action, your magic work is kiss. Keep it simple. This is Judith Bryles. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. We'll be right back. Is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged event. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the Events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. 
At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so now we have the, uh, the, the, the reason why you're going to do this, because we're going to gather up people. And do that. You're going to keep it simple. That's the essential. Your lure has one goal, to bring them down into the hook, to leave their name and their email. So first step was, who do you want to be attracted to you? Second step is, what do you want them to do? That's to leave their name. So three, what are the essentials that you need to get them there? Well, first of all, it's the headline. All right, so if I'm going to go back to mine, and my first one that I had was get your free guide uh, for the publishing essentials must-haves. That was it. And I had a cover with uh, my branded sheepy guy uh, in the bull soup and I because I called it the publishing essentials alphabet soup, which is what I will call the book. All right, so on the new one, it's the SOS website due diligence essentials plan. To protect you. And then I go into the three bullets that are the protection. So what are yours? Um, You need a headline, the hook to bring them in. Um, You got to have your your keyword that's going to work with it. So if you've got to instantly catch their attention, that's it. And you that's why and your placement is essential here. Um, if you go to my website, thebookshepherd.com, you'll see it. It's right under the banner header with my name, with my picture. It's right under it. Don't let your webmaster, because your webmaster is going to place this, don't let them place it at the bottom. Now, you could have it on the upper right, so it's visual. Remember, people read, at least in the United States, left to right. You know, if you're in Saudi Arabia, It'll be right to left. If you're in Asian countries, it could be from bottom to top. But you you have to go with your culture and your country. And since most of my listeners are in North America, it will be a left to right arena and in Europe. So with that, I want it to have it at eyeball range and above what's known as above the fold. So if you mine's directly above square needle, but it's okay to have it more to the right. Don't go to the left. You want it to the right. Remember, this is where the eyeball is going when they're on your website. You want to have the benefits. So the four components of the essentials would be the headline, the benefits, the call to action, the opt-in uh, form. Um, and there could be a five, but let, I'll come to that. So the headline is the instant catch using a keyword that will ease their pain, will they'll seduce them, that will bring them in. Then you want to have, you know, one or two line, a description, and then maybe some points um, that will be the benefits. You've got to tell by teasing. Um, and, you know, it, wouldn't it be fun to think that you could always write fascinating bullet points? But you know what? You can. All right. The next step then is that call to action. You've got to expressively, really blatantly, bluntly Tell people to sign up. Don't be namby-pamby about this. So the call to action and then write. The call to action is the opt-in form is that it goes in. It says it'll that opt-in form will be the button. You will see it on my website or if you've seen it on others. And it's click here to subscribe, All right? When they click, when they click, they will go to the landing page which is going to give more information and they put in uh, they can put in their name there or I've actually had them where they literally 
put in their name on my first one. You just put your name in right up front and your email and then click, you're done. Or you could say click to subscribe and it goes in further. Either way is fine. You can have them go that one more step, maybe give them a little bit more information, or you could just make it easy peasy, just the name right on the opt-in form, email, and then once they click the magic button, it should come to them within a couple of minutes, all right? You don't want to have it wait too long. Now, I mentioned there was maybe a number five. Those essentials were the headline, the benefits, the call to action, and your opt-in form where they put their email and their name. Five could be maybe proof. And sometimes there's social media. You, maybe you have people who say you're a rock star. Maybe they've experienced their books. Maybe they consulted with you. Whatever it is, proof. You may have uh, a couple of uh, lines. And we're talking about blurbs. And understand the difference between a testimonial, which could run a couple of paragraphs, to you know the review, to the testimonial, to the blurb endorsement. Right, so you want to get it down to like one line, no more if you're going to use proof. So whether or not you need to add proof depends upon a number of criteria, including the strength of your brand and the traffic source. If you don't have a solid brand, if a lot of people don't know you, you may have to juice it up a little bit um, and have a little bit more proof in there. Now, next, next. What incentive should you give? And that's always the question. Well, what could I do? What could I give? All right. It's a smart tactic to offer an upfront incentive or let's, you know, let's call it an ethical bribe uh, to convince people to sign up for your list. All right. So I put these reasons why. Remember when I go back to um, what I'm doing, when I ask, I ask three questions. Um, do you know where all the details of your website are backed up? Do you know what to do if your webmaster is injured, ill, or disappears? Do you have all your logins, passwords, codes, or anything else that you need if you must access the administration side of your website immediately? All right? Those are all important questions. What can you come up with? Or they could be simple statements, must-haves for, uh, you know, etc. Now, you could give a free report. You could offer a webinar. You could have an audio seminar. You may have an ancient online course you just want to throw into the mix. You may even offer a PDF of one of your entire books, a good book, not one that's, you know, your beginning book usually. But let's just say you offer a PDF of your entire deal. I've got PDFs of some of my books that I could easily offer if I wanted to. All right. So what do you have? Um, and you want it to have something that people feel, yeah, I'd like to have that. Something that's needed or wanted just might make things easier for them, might ease their pain, might open up the solution window for where they're going. You can offer a report over time, and that's what's called a drip um, as a series of emails via your autoresponder system. And that would be tied in usually with your email provider, um, how they're handling your email. So you could do a drip system. Remember how I told you that we, I had these eight publishing essentials. I had them all at once. And then what we did is we broke them into eight and dripped one every other day, one a day. Okay. Be prepared to entice subscribers for what comes in the next email. So if you're going to do a drip, give them a little tease of what's going to be what to look for. If it's a one shot download, like my website form, make sure the blogs, any blogs that follow. Um, and again, when they subscribe in, get make sure it automatically drops them in that they now get your regular e-blast. Continue with high content info in your area of expertise. So this is this website, going back to what I said in our opening segment, your website's got to have trust. It's got to develop trust in this process. And that by having solid content is the way you do it. The bottom line here is when you're looking for incentives is for you want to create the key for people to realize that you're giving more than you're taking, as in pitching, 
and that they'll happily stay with you much longer. I'm a huge believer you give more than you take. Now, here's some top uh, choices that could, that to think about that might noodle for you. Cheat sheets, I've mentioned that earlier. A free online course. How about exclusive access to a private online forum? A free ebook, free puzzle or a game? How, maybe you could have a composite of a bunch of downloadable articles. Uh, maybe, um, maybe they become a members and there's a members only special. Something that you create special just for the opt-in. Now, the other thing is I want you to make sure when the subscribe, that opt-in button is big and it's bold and it's in color. So it pops. Okay, so it pops. So the next thing that, you know, as, as we look at this is you start wondering, okay, so how long should my copy be? That's really a good question. How long should it be? And I guess the best answer would be, well, as long as it's necessary and no longer. That sounds like reasonable, doesn't it? So in the case of an opt-in page, the essentials have to be there. That headline I talked about, uh, some of the key benefits that, that, that would uh, be the lure to pull them in, and the call to action. You cannot get away without having them. But going back to step one, a bit more copy will help you better target the exact type of person you want on your list. So don't forget, you want to reassure anyone that you respect their privacy and emails will not be shared. That's essential. So, and I should say that if you don't have a privacy, privacy policy up on your website, make sure that you put it together. You can go online and there are templates that you can pull, but is required. It's actually the European countries that required it, but it's dominoed and we all have it here. All right. The final segment will be coming up. It's Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. I'm Judith Bryles, and we will finish up How to Create the Ultimate Opt-in. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book... 
If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, the ultimate opt-in. The purpose of your opt-in is to gather emails. Gather emails and then you communicate. So I'm going to hit these last couple of points and then let's come about what are we going to send out once you got them because that's really important. All right, so just to recap, number one, number one is to identify who do you want to really come to your website and, and hang out too. What do you want them to do? And that's what the opt-in, you want them to sign up. That is what you want them to do. So that's what the opt-in or the lead magnet page will do. Three, what are those essential elements? And that's where you need the headline, you need benefits, you need a call to action, like sign up um, for my free report, my free fill in the blank. And then you need the opt-in for uh, form, and then maybe you need proof, but that's not essential. So the incentives that you should c consider giving from cheat sheets to maybe you have a free course, maybe you have a PDF of a book that you have, maybe you have some cool games, maybe you have the ability to participate in private forum on one of the other social media sites. Maybe you're going to offer a series of free webinars that are just really hot um, and that they only can get it if they register and sign up. And then, then your copy, how long should it be? As long as necessary. But this is not where you're not, you're not going to be doing an encyclopedia. Keep it short, 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 and use keywords. Now, that's, those are five. Now, here's six. How much information should you ask for? All right, so I've mentioned this before. You could just ask for the email, but I think it's smarter to get at least the first name. Why? Because when you send out e-blasts, most mail forms have the capability to say, hello, Sam. You know, hey, George, hi, Susan, they can personalize it a little bit. So I think that's a good idea. The less form data you ask for, though, the more people will sign up. If you start asking for their phone number and their address, it's going to be adios, just guaranteed. They'll be gone. So the, the name and email is all I would go for. If you ask for too much, it's a click away. And I'm telling you, they will kick a, click away. The more trust you build, the more people are open to you, and you get to communicate with prospects regularly, which means it's no longer an all or nothing situation. They will come back to you. And then number seven is what works best. And that's, a, that's probably maybe an essential part. All right, changes to headlines. You know, if you're if you know you have a really hot item that you want to give, but it's just not hooking right, I'm going to suggest you start playing around with headlines. And two sources that I would play around if you want something quirky that has your keyword in it, there's an entity called Portent. P O R T E N T. Portent.com. P O R T is in Tom. E is in Edward. N Nancy T Tom, poor P O R T E N T dot com. All right, so in it, in, give it time, a little time for it to load, um, and then what it will come over, and and uh, and they've just been bought by another group, so it may also be portent dot org. Try both of those dots uh, to get in there, and then what you'll do is put in your keyword, whatever the keyword is that you use, whether it's your branding, your theme, your expertise, um, and it could be, you know, what it, the goodie is that you're going to be giving away to entice them. Put that in and see what headlines come up. And some of them will be very quirky, but it may be the attention getter you want. Now, your benefits, I don't want you to be, make them quirky. Those have got to be rock solid here. Um, so that's one thing. The other source to go to, to check out, especially if it's got an emotional poll, you think you need that pull in would be to go to the advanced marketing Institute site 
And that would be A as in Apple, M as in Mary, institute.com. aminstitute.com. Click on uh, the tab that says Headline Analyzer. All right. And you can put up to 20 words in there. And it'll give you the emotional, the intellectual, the spiritual kind of pull of what the uh, headline is. Now, my advice for you is to play around here because you, it gives a score. When you click on it, it gives you a score. And this is what copywriters often use. And with that, with that score, you want a score of at least 4040. Um, and if you're not there, what what it'll uh, using different adjectives will come in and heighten it up. So this is where you could have a little fun. But either one of those sources might give you a little the snap, crackle, and pop. So when people look out, they go, wowza, I need that. So headlines. Now, button colors um, that you want to have a, a bright, I think, don't use a boring, don't use black. Black doesn't, you can't use black. Um, and although eggplant is one of my favorite colors, I wouldn't be using that unless I had in the middle of it where it said click here or subscribe, that was in white. So it had uh, a pop to it. So if, if images, images are always good and they can make a difference um, when it comes to you and your opt-in rate. So I would have at least one image um, and, and do that. And but it, it's always important to remember the very essential is is that identifying who you want to be attracted to you. And that's where you start. So forget about getting the best opt in rate. What you want is the right people. So, yeah, it's cool that when I put up the new one, I got fifteen hundred new people signing in, sharing their email address. But. Are they all the right people? Because, you know, if you're online, most likely you're going to have at least for on your own and you have a business or a service or something, you have a website. But are you an author? Are you a publisher? Are you a writer who wants to eventually become an author? Okay, see, that's my market. That's who I want to sign in. So this is something now. Just a heads up here that if you go to MailChimp.com um, and if you're using MailChimp as your email resource, which a lot of people do because MailChimp has a, a free email service uh, for up to 2,000 people without charging you anything, uh, you can they have a special guide that you can get into. And it's, 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 it's a, a fabulous blogging.com. And then if you'll put in the search bar, you know, opt in option, it'll probably lead you to where you can get into it. So the activity I'm going to give to you, I mean, I'm going to give you homework, everyone who's listening in. So I want you to just literally um, write, put, put headline and give yourself a few lines and now start playing around with headline. Certainly take advantage of the portent website or the AM Institute uh, website to fine tune what you have. Secondly, what are all the benefits that they're gonna get from this little gem that you're giving away? What are the benefits? And then what are you? What words, what phrases are you gonna use for your call to action to bring them into play, all right? What words, and, and this, we're talking a couple of words, maybe three words, max. Um, and then what's gonna be your opt-in form? now? I mentioned earlier the landing page. So if they click into the subscribe it, they're going to go to another spot. There could be another page that comes up. So then you can give a little bit more information, even maybe a little bit about you um, and encourage them. And then if you want to share any proof and then you also could put some proof on that page. Now, let's say you got them. What are you going to do with them? All right. So in our final minute here or two together, is that you've got to really figure out what am I going to consistently give them? That I am a huge proponent of blogging. I have a new blog every Tuesday and every Saturday. Saturday is always going to be my top 10 Twitter tips, and I always have something I write up a little before them. I always include a new poster that we've made, kind of for inspiring to push out. Um, or that would be one. 
And then on Tuesday is always a high content. On Wednesdays, I send out an easing, which is totally different kind of announcements of what's going on. Um, usually, sometimes an article, there'll be information about webinars coming up or any other event or activity. Um, and, and I always have a funny. I always end it with a funny. I always have a, a, someone who has written me in with a question, and I include that. So we have those coming along. All right. And so that's what that's what I include on my areas. So I have blogs Tuesday and Saturday. I have an easing on Wednesday and on Thursday, the first edition of every podcast rolls out. So that's consistent. So people who are subscribers know this is what's going to happen and this is what's going to come along. And that's how you build super fans. So they know what to look for. They know on these days, these things are going to come from. Um, and it will make you be an expert. It will give you credibility. It will make you look like you know what you're talking about um, versus random. The kiss of death for people who blog, they're enthusiastic when they start out and then they realize it's work. So my final tip is going to help you out here. And I always do a blog once a year on 52 different ideas to do. But here's another idea. Once you've been blogging for a year, and by the way, you do it on the same day of the week, I shoot mine out around 5 in the morning. They're, they're scheduled to go out at around 5 in the morning, but always on Tuesday and always on Saturday. And it, even if there's a holiday, they still go out. So one other final tip in our last 30 seconds is this. If you have been blogging for a while, start repurposing. Go back and revisit every blog you've done a year out. Change the headline. Change the first paragraph or two. Rearrange your bullets and reshoot it out again. And that will save you a lot of time. All right, with that, this is Judith Bryles. It's another edition of Your Guide to Book Publishing. Be with me next week when Joan Stewart will be joining me and we are going to talk about amazing hooks to bring in your customers. Have a great publishing day. part of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles each week a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you the author to the next level you'll learn tips and secrets on how to create strategize develop publish and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey how to avoid the publishing predators how to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out authoru.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, thebookshepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by Author You and the Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network.